Amen. That, see, that's how you do it. Come, let's put our hands together. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I brought my eyes tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, because I'm blind as a bat without him. I'd be up here faking. Y'all don't even know how many times I'd be up here faking. And I'd be praying that God, when communion comes, Bishop don't ask me to read nothing. Because I don't be having my glasses with me. I'm like, Jesus. You know how you say, pray, Jesus, take the will? Yeah, we don't have to do it right then. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Amen. One time for Chocolate Thunder. He did just such a wonderful job tonight. Amen. <laughs> Y'all don't even understand how long I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> I really have. Amen. But I, I give God praise tonight. Amen. God has taken me through a journey, a wilderness, everything. Hallelujah. I need you to know, understand something. The Bible says to whom much is gi given. Yes. Understand that. God has given you much. He will require what he gave you. Trust and believe. You will pay. Amen? Oh, yeah. See, God, God has not put greatness in you. It's not going to require greatness out of you. Now, here's the thing. How you get to that is a process. That process does not feel good. That process does not look good. It don't make you look good. Amen? But it's worth it. It's, it's worth it. I've been, working, I've been walking with God for 32 years. I know I don't look. I know I look very young. And I am. Amen? But 32 years. I've had people leave me. I have people uh, 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 put my name out there. People lie on me. People do all kinds of stuff to hurt me, to wound me. Best friends, people I put my life in their hands, turn on me, do all kinds of stuff. But you know the one person who never did that? Jesus. He's the one. He's the only one. I, I love how Mother Hepburn says, says this. So you can tell Jesus your, your secrets and he won't tell nobody. Amen? But the problem we have a lot of times, we, re, we put more in people than in God. We run more to the phone than to the altar. Amen? And, and when we find ourselves in problems, we find ourselves stressed out, and then we mad at God. God was like, I ain't never tell you to go there. God says, I ain't tell you to run to them. God says, I always told you to run to me. You just didn't. So what you're dealing with, I'm going to help you with, but don't do it again. Amen? Amen? So let's not do it again. Hallelujah. Y'all ready for the word tonight? Yes. It's going to be very simple. Amen? I'm going to follow... Um, Pastor Lockhart's example, y'all keep me um, abreast of the time, amen? It is what time now? Y'all be too ready for that. Y'all y'all just like be too excited for that. Uh, y'all Tuesday, y'all was just showing out on Tuesday. I mean, y'all was calling out time. Uh, uh, 8, 8.45, oh, really? Good Lord. But I'm, I'm going to let y'all have that. Amen. We don't give y'all too much, but I'm going to let y'all have that. But tonight it's going to be, it, uh, you know, it don't take God long to say what he needs to say. And when God gave me this, as a matter of fact, when I I called Dr. Hepburn uh, and I, I think I texted him some stuff. And um, and I was just calling him to encourage him because it was about the word that he preached on Sunday. How when you, how many people remember the word they preached on Sunday? How many how many how many people remember the part where he had Phil lift him up and he was messing with Phil talking about take your Wheaties? Now the devil now I'm gonna give you a little backstory. The devil was attacking me that day, actually for the last couple of days past, it, with my stomach and stuff like that. It's like I eat something, and, ooh, it's not good. Amen. And that day, he was working overtime. So I was like, Jesus, come on now, God. Come on. 
So I was running back and forth, back and forth to the bathroom. And when he did that illustration, I was behind the barricade here. So I never saw that illustration. But it impacted me so much that when I went home that day, I was painting my room. Don't ask me why I did that on Sunday. Just I, I do weird stuff like that sometimes. But in the middle of painting my room, it hit me. So I stopped and I called him. I said, do you know what about that, the most powerful part about that word? It's when he lifted you up, no part of your body touched the floor. That means when your head went up, the body went up. I said, it is virtually impossible. Listen to what I'm saying to you. It is virtually impossible to miss God in this church and you in position. It, you have to try to miss him. You have to just try to miss God altogether. It's impossible that if you're in position, as he goes up, you go up. Hear that. As he goes up, you go up. The only time that doesn't happen is if a part of your body gets cut off and it cannot follow the head. So you know what that means? Don't get cut off. Amen? Stop putting yourself in situations that get you cut off. Stop putting yourself with people who get you cut off. I don't care how cute they are. I don't care how much money they got. I don't care how, how, how good they talk game is. It, it ain't that good. Amen? Because when you when you looking crazy and you looking toe up and you call them, they from disconnected. Oh, when you need when you need when you need help, they ain't nowhere around. God forbid you get locked up, they ain't putting nothing on your books and they ain't coming to see you. Somebody say amen. You know that how to, you know that's how it go. And nine times out of ten, the people who do us the worst are the people who related to us. Say amen. Oh, this don't be oh yeah, okay. This don't be a rough room tonight. I see that already. Amen. I'm gonna leave y'all alone. But this word came to me, and I believe it's what we need to hear. Especially as we've been Learn about um, eschatology in the end times. But this is the question that I want to ask everybody tonight. What pleases God? I, I, I didn't ask you. I didn't, Rosie, you just own it tonight. But Rosie? <laughs> yes, faith pleases God. But I don't want you to answer that question. I want you to think about the question. What pleases God? As a Christian, what pleases God? I asked Pastor Lockhart this today. I said, why is it we don't want to please God like we should? Now, I can understand somebody who just got into church and don't understand the, 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 you know, the ins and outs. But somebody who's been seasoned, who's who been in church a lot, we should be the ones trying to please God the most, but we're not. We're not trying to please God the most, and that's a problem. That's a problem because how is the world going to see Christ if we are not demonstrating them? How is the world going to see the light and we got the light cut off? Or we got to hid under something? Are we trying to be like everybody else? We trying to blend in. This is the problem with blending in. You never do. You never blend in. You can't blend in because you are a square, you are, you are a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. It's going to be issues because you're marked. You can't ever fit in. I don't care how much you try. You may, you may kind of blend for a little bit, but after a while, you're going to stick out because what's in you is going to shine whether you want it to or not. Somebody say amen. amen. So, the, the, so you might as well just get with the program and go ahead and run with it. Stop trying to fight it and run with it. Amen. Don't, don't stop trying to be like everybody else. Be you. Stop, be the, stop trying to be the next somebody. Be the first you. When I turned 40, which was a couple of years ago, I ain't gonna lie, it was, it was a while ago. But when I turned 40, something happened to me. It's what happens to a lot of men. I stopped caring about what people thought. If you like what I had on, good. If you didn't, that's your problem. Because you didn't buy it. Amen. If you don't, you don't like what I drive, okay, fine. You ain't got to never get no ride. I keep driving. I'm, I'm gone. Hallelujah. 
You don't like what I you don't like what I'm eating? That's that's cool. You ain't buy it. We need to stop caring about what people think and start caring more about what God thinks. Amen. Hallelujah. Go on your Bibles to Psalms 19. Now I'm gonna read this from a couple of different versions, and it may not sound like yours, but it's still God's word. Hallelujah. Psalms 19, start at verse 12. I'm going to read this first out of the Message Bible. I, I like these different versions. Amen? Some people don't like them, but they ain't preaching right now. I am. Hallelujah. But the Message Bible says it this way. Otherwise, how will we find our way? Or no, no when we, listen, listen to this. Otherwise, how will we find our way? Or Know when we play the fool. This is in the Bible. Clean the slate, God, so we can start our day fresh. Keep me from stupid sins. Somebody can say amen to that. God, keep me from stupid sins. These are some sins that are just stupid. God, how many people have ever prayed that God keep me from doing something stupid? Raise your hand. Why the rest of y'all lying in church? You know, I know all y'all done prayed that at one point. You may not want to admit it. Keep me from stupid sins, from thinking I can take over your work. Then I can start this day sun-washed, scrubbed clean of, of the grime of sin. These are the words of my mouth and are what I chew on and pray. Accept them when I place them on the morning altar, O oh God, my rock, my altar rock, God, my priest of my altar. This is how the Living Bible says this. But how can I ever know what, our sin, what sins are lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from hidden faults and keep me from deliberate wrongs. Deliberate wrongs. I mean, you know what you're doing. You plan to do that. That was you, then you. Listen, nobody mistakes and sins. Nobody, nobody sins by mistake. <laughs> How many people ever thought that you sinned by mistake? Raise your hand. Oh, now you don't, you don't want to raise your hand now. How many people have ever thought that you may do something by mistake? You may sin by mistake or, or do something wrong by mistake. And you didn't mean it, but it, God, God, that was a mistake. No, it wasn't. Just because you don't know what's wrong don't mean it. Just because you know some, don't know something's wrong don't mean it's not wrong. Just because you don't know it, that, that means nothing. If you don't know that you're breaking the law, that does not mean you're not breaking the law. You're still breaking one. You just may not know there's a law that you're breaking. Amen? Your, the absence of knowledge does not negate what you're doing. Hallelujah. I know it is. Help me from deliberate wrongs. Help me to stop doing them. Only then can I be free of guilt and innocent of some great crime. May my spoken words and my unspoken thoughts be even be pleasing even to you, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. See, this is the problem with us. Our desire to please God, let me tell you where it should come from. I desire, I desire to please God should come from a place of deficiency. Let me explain what that means. That means you know what you are not and what you cannot do for you. And because God is so good to us, we should want to please him. The desire to please him should come from a place that, you know, God has been good. I don't deserve to breathe, but I'm breathing. I don't deserve to have a job, but I got one. I don't even deserve to be driving. I don't deserve to own a car, but God has blessed me with a vehicle. I, I should have been fired 10 times over, but I just got a promotion. God has been good to me. So because God has been so good to me, I should want to please him. I should want to make him happy. I should want to make him smile. How can I receive all of this and not even say thank you? Now, I don't know about you, but I, I, grew, I grew up at a time where you said, thank you. You said, no, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. Yes, sir. 
uh, uh, Caribbean people know this very well. If I didn't sleep with you, you should be saying uh, good morning when I see you. I can remember moving down here, and I think the first week I'm, I was down here from New York, uh, um, part of Jump Ministries, everything, I wake up in the morning, and Bishop walked past me, and I didn't say nothing. And as I was going to the bathroom, he said, he said, uh, he said, um, Coco, let me ask you a question. I said, yes. He said, did I sleep with you? I'm like, what? Because the question, I'm like, what? He said, did I sleep with you? I said, no, sir, you didn't sleep with me. Then he said, why didn't you say good morning? Manners. Manners. Something that simple. And we as Christians sit in church every day, every service, some, three times a week. Since Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, God does amazing stuff for us, in front of us, and we're not designed to please him. When we leave here, we go back to our own day, we go back to our own stuff, we go back to what we want to do, how we were ranked. Because you know, when, when church, especially on Sunday, when church led on Sunday, we have our own su Sunday planned out, where we're going to go, what we're going to do. Let me ask you a question. When have we ever woken up in the morning? And say, God, what do you want me to do today? God, where do you want me to go today? Oh, here's, here's one. Try this one. God, what do you want me to wear today? How many of us, yeah, yeah. How many of us ever woken up and said, God, what do you want me to put on today? I know I had an outfit picked out, but what do you want me to put on? See, that's a, that's a heart that wants to please him. I want to make you happy. How many, how many ladies in here have been, ever been in or in now a uh, relationship? Raise your hand. How many ladies like to wear something to please your man? Raise your hand. Well, some of y'all hands kind of happened when I don't know what happened there. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that later. <laughs> That's a whole different situation. But you want to wear something to make your man happy. Because you want to be a prize. You want when y'all go out for, you know, the people to look and, let, you know, see, see him with you and you, you with him. And just, you know, we want to please and want to make him happy. When you're in a marriage and you start now, sometimes something happens later on, but start now, you want to please your spouse. Well, we're supposed to be married to Jesus, right? Are we supposed to be married to Jesus? Yes or no? Yes. Then why don't we want to please our spouse? Why is it everything more about us than about him? Why is it more about what we want than what he wants? Why is it more about what makes us happy than makes him happy? Why is it that we always have to get the recognition for something? Why can't we do something to bless the church and don't nobody know our name? Why we always got to throw hints, you know, that was, you know, you know, uh, you know what I was passing by. We always got to throw hints that we had something connected with that. Why can't we just do something and be anonymous? And that God gets the glory. Because he's supposed to be the one getting the glory. You, you know how we say glory to God? Do we really mean that? Or is that just something we learned to say? That's just like a response to doing, oh, glory to God. That's just like saying hi. It don't mean nothing, just words. It has to get beyond words. Amen? We got to want to please the one who redeemed us. Because your mama didn't do it. I know you love your mama, but she didn't redeem you. I know you and your best friend have been through everything, but they didn't redeem you. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Go to Romans chapter 14. See, this is why I, 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 I was mulling over this, and I, I was thinking, and I was like, God, you know, one of the things that keeps us from wanting to please you is our flesh, because we're always going to deal with this flesh. We're always going to battle with the flesh. Amen? And let me tell you something. Here, here's a secret. Y'all want to know a secret? You want to know a secret? The older you get, the more you battle with it. I did ask the old lady one time. I'm going to try to clean this up because with this question they ask, I can't really ask y'all like that. But I, they say, well, well, when do you reach it? He said, ma'am, when did you reach your age 
Uh, when do you reach the age when you don't want pleasure anymore? She said, I don't know. Ask somebody older than me. <laughs> she said, I don't know about that. But that means the older you get, the harder it is to deal with certain things. And the more you let go unaddressed and undealt with and unsubmitted will be harder to rectify. Please do not think that the sin you ignore goes away. It doesn't. It grows. It's in a dark, damp place, and it's growing. I don't care how much you, 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 you just ignore it like it ain't there. It's still there. So ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance can be death. And the more you let go un unaddressed and, and, and uh, undealt with, and, and, un un and you don't want to face it, it makes it harder to deal with. That means some stuff you may have to revisit, as painful as it is, you got to face it. As painful as that situation was, you got to deal with it. You know why? Because you want to be healed. You want to be better. Amen? Amen. I, use, I use this analogy all the time. I've been through a lot of surgeries. See? See? A lot. Guess what? The pain from surgery does not last forever. Yes, it does hurt after the pain medicine wear off in God, Jesus. I remember one time I had to get an axis taken out of this leg so I could have one put in this leg. But when they put the axis in, if it's in there for any extended amount of time, it gets in there. So they have to dig it out. <laughs> this would be this will be all right. <laughs> this would be like, oh God. Yeah, they had to dig it out. So it takes a while for the stuff that you know you for the clothes. So the nurse had to come in and clean. And one time she came in to clean, and she said, grab my hand. She, she said, grab my arm. By the time, it was about 30 seconds. She said, let my arm go. Let my arm go. <laughs> Please let my arm go. Because I was about to snap that lady's arm. Because it hurt. I said, Jesus, take me now. Kill me, Jesus. Because that pain was the worst pain I think I've ever felt in my life. Guess what? It was a necessary pain. Because in order for that wound to be cleaned properly, she had to touch it. In order for God to do what he needs to do properly in our life, he has to touch it. We can't ask for a proper cleaning and won't let him touch it. The pain don't last forever. And look, look at it. God gives you grace. He's there with you in the pain. He ain't said face it and face it by yourself. He said we won't face it together. So why don't we face it? Because that's the until that gets dealt with, that could be the reason why we don't want to please God. That could be the reason why we want to self-medicate. We want to soothe ourselves. We want to make it right for ourselves. Here's the problem with that. You can't. We are incapable of healing ourselves. We are incapable of righting wrongs, especially generational ones. We try to do it all the time. And God is standing there in the heaven. You could you imagine? We God, we trying to do our own stuff and trying to trying to make, make our own way, trying to fix our own problem. And God standing in heaven. Say, uh, Angel, come on, come on, come on, come on. Look at this. Look at this foolishness here. Yeah, where they get that from? I ain't teach them that. What what? What are they doing? Why are they just going around? Can't they see going around the circle? They ain't going to what? They're just going around in a circle. But it just, I, I, don't, I don't understand either. God is sitting up in heaven just like, what in the world? God says, I gave them the blueprint. I gave them the way out. And as they're walking around in a the circle, they're walking, back to, they're walking past the exit. They keep walking around. This is the exit right here. And this is us trying to fix our own problems. Constantly walking past the exit. 
That's the way out, mind you. That's the way to healing. That's the way to restoration. That's the way to a heart for God. That's the way to, for a heart to please God. Be constantly walking past it. And God in his love and his pain lets us walk past it until we realize we're walking around in a circle. Until we realize we really ain't fixing nothing. Amen? So we got, we got to get past that, that sin problem. We got to get past the flesh problem. Romans chapter 7. Go to Romans chapter 7. Believe it or not, y'all, we're almost done. Romans chapter 7. Start at verse 14. We haven't said I got it. Now, this too is probably this coming from the Living Bible as well. Y'all need to go by the Living Bible. Amen? Romans chapter 7, verse 14. The law is good. Then, yes, verse 14. The law is good. Then in, in the problem is not there then. If the law is good, then that's not what the problem is. The problem's not there. Because, because I am so, this is the problem. I am so under the slavery of sin. I know perfectly well that I am doing, what I'm doing is wrong. <laughs> I know perfectly well what I am doing is wrong. And my bad conscience proves that I agree with the law, these laws that I am breaking. I don't understand myself at all. Who has ever said that? Raise your hand. Yeah, this is class participation, right? I do not understand myself at all. I really want to do what is right, but I can't. I don't want to do what is wrong, what I hate, but I can't help myself because I am no longer doing it. It is sin inside of me that is stronger and makes me do these evil things. I know I am rotten through and through. So as my sin nature is concerned, no matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. I want to, but I can't. Now, if I am doing what I don't want to do, it is plain where the problem is. Sin still has this evil grasp on me. When I want to do good, I don't. When I try not to do what is wrong, I do it anyway. Now, I, now if I am doing what I don't want to do, it is plain what the problem is. Sin, sin still has this evil grasp on me. Now, could that be any plain? Stuff I want to do, I don't, I, 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 I don't do it. Stuff I know bad for me, I do that anyway. As a matter of fact, sometimes I find myself running to do that faster than I run to do anything else. So a lot of times that's more pleasurable than doing right. Chocolate, how Bishop said, chocolate still tastes good. You know you ain't supposed to have it. How many people like fried food? I'm going I'm to get, get real black right now. Y'all ready for me to get real black? White people just go along with me. Just ride with me for a little bit. <laughs> Tim, you just, wow. How many people like gizzards? Yeah, raise your hand if you like gizzards. Yeah, yeah. Them gizzards be good. It, what? Child, chicken gives it Jesus? How many people like pork rinds? But you know they ain't good for you. You know they run up your, run up your high blood sugar, but pressure, you throw your cholesterol all out of whack. We taking all kind of pills, but it tastes good. But it's killing me. 
but it tastes good. But it's killing me. It tastes good. This dress don't fit no more, but it tastes good. This outfit too small for me now, but it tastes good. My feet hurt if I walk more than 10 feet, but it tastes good. The thing that's killing us tastes the best. The stuff you're doing that you can sneak with, that's the most exciting stuff to do. To try to get away with it. How many people ever try to do stuff behind the teacher back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, rest of y'all, why y'all lying in church? That's not necessary. Y'all in a place of safety. You can, be the, you can tell the truth. Don't nobody care at this point. You're well past the age of being, being, being the chastised, so just let it go. <laughs> Who cares if somebody know you did what, when? Jesus. How many people would like to get stuff past, try to get stuff past their parents? Yes. Yes. How many people ever snuck out the house? And just 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 miss being caught. You just slip right, right back in and right before. Oh, did you can put your head down? Oh, did you about that life? Wow. Learn something new every day. Amen. But if we want to please God. We got to give up what pleases us. We let wait, 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 wait. We don't have to give up who pleases us. Yeah, I know I ain't no getting any minutes there. That was gonna be uh, you hear like crickets. <laughs> Wish I had the cricket soundtrack right now. That's about where, <laughs> about where we are. You don't have to give him or her up because they may please you, but they don't please God. They may go along with your plan, but they don't go with his. They may fit your life, but they don't fit his. And if we're supposed to be living his life and not our life, whose life we supposed to be fitting? Whose plan we supposed to be implementing? Who are we supposed to be pleasing? Just because you give offering in church don't mean you pleasing God. I'm going to help you out with something else. Just because you come to church don't mean you're pleasing God. Can you sit right up in here and be displeasing to God? Oh, just because you taking communion? That don't mean nothing. Because it can become just an act. It don't mean like you're worshiping God. It don't mean that you're even reverencing God. You could, be, you could just be doing it so don't nobody look at you funny. Why well, they ain't taking communion? What they been doing? So to keep the rumor mill, you know, down, we just take communion. We don't mean it. No, we just slept with somebody the night before. Am I getting too much in your business? Oh, well. You're here for help, Amen. My, matter of fact, you just left somebody bed before you came to church. And they ain't put no ring on nothing. And this, you know, this was you, you y'all were just, you know, coming off from a getaway. You know how y'all, you know, I, I'm going away this weekend, you, not by yourself. And we do all this stuff. We do, we do all this stuff to please ourselves a lot of the time because we're trying to mask a pain. We're trying to cover our hurt. We're trying to make our life make sense. Let me help you out with something. Jesus is the only one that can make our life make sense. We can't do this stuff in our life makes sense. You can act confusion to confusion and it work itself out. No, it, no, no. And a lot of stuff we do not because we just want to do. You know, Scripture says stuff. I don't understand myself. Stuff we're doing is generational. Our mama did it. Our daddy did it. We've been around somebody who did it. That's all we saw. So if that's all we saw, that's all we know to do. That's all we have ever learned. But this is how you fix so-and-so. 
This is this is how you get over a cold. You up, you rub hot Vaseline. What in the name of where did that come from? How has that ever fixed the cold? Please, I, if anything, it does, it give you a burn. It hurt. It hurt. Oh my God, it hurt. Take skin off hurt. But that's what old folks say. Or, 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 this, this, get, go outside and get this bush and, and, and boil it and, and drink it. You better kill yourself. That's some nasty. What did you? Now, I will add, I will, will acknowledge this. Joey has made Cersei in the house quite often. I know that smell. Amen. And it works. But not all bush medicine work. Amen. And don't just go out there and be grabbing something and trying to boil it. <laughs> it's better kill yourself. And even if you did not grow up knowing how to fix problems, you did not grow up with a good role model. You did not grow up with, with a good example in the home. This is how God fixed it. He brought you here. Let me tell you how that makes stuff better. Even though you didn't grow up with it, God brought you to it so he can help remedy what you didn't have. So you may not have grown up with it, but now it's all around you. So God says, now, what is your excuse? Now, why don't you want to fix stuff? Now, why don't you want to please? Yeah, you may have grown up with people who just trying to do their own thing and being selfish, but now you're around love. Now you're around community. Now you're around selfless people. Why are you still doing this thing, the stuff you've been doing? What is not fixed in you that keeps you doing the same stuff? What are you not allowing me to touch that is keep giving you the same result? You want a different result, but you keep doing the same thing. That's insanity. You, I'm not calling your name. You're insane. Because if you keep doing the same thing, expecting something different to happen, that's what that is. And God says, here is how you remedy this. This is how you fix this. You come to me. You come to the altar. No, it's not glamorous. No, it's not fun. And some, and not, not, nine times out of ten, it's going to take a while, but it's what's necessary for you to be better. Why do you think I am alive? I am alive. Because of this altar. I am alive because I put into place and to practice principles that were inconvenient and uncomfortable. I am alive because I've given, given a man permission to speak into my life, to get into my business. What are you willing to do to be healed? What are you willing to do to be better? What are you willing to do to want to please God? Are you satisfied in just pleasing you? Or do you want a heart that pleases him? You want to know what pleases God? I'm going to help you out with that. I'm going to give you a long, uh, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a quick, this is what pleases God. Okay, you want to write this down? Here we go. This is what pleases God. Fellowship with him pleases him. That's the easy one. Obedience to his word. That pleases him. Belief in his word as absolute is what pleases him. So if you don't know what pleases him, you can write this stuff down. You can come to me afterwards. I'll give you the list. A heart surrendered to him is what pleases him. So what we learn. Fellowship with him pleases him. Obedience to his word pleases him. But yes, yeah, thank you. You you can tell what you tell what Miss Carolyn. A belief in his word as absolute. That means his word is the final authority. Nobody you know. Their word is the final authority. Not the mama, not the auntie, not, not, not nobody. God's word is the final authority. And it is absolute. That means there's no error in it. It never needs to be corrected. And it, it never needs to be varied. It is what it is. 
is good all by itself. Amen? You have to, but those are the things that pleases God. But relationship, how often do any of us talk to God every day? Is God the first person you talk to in the morning and the last person you talk to at night? See, Jesus is the only thing that keeps us from talking to ourselves. At the jump in, we deal with a lot of homeless people that have gone through various different situations, various different trials. Some of them, some of them are not talking to themselves because they're demon-possessed. Some of them are talking to themselves because emotionally they're so jacked up, they don't know what else to do. Amen? I cut a young man here the other day. He constantly talked to him. The other day he was swinging. I thought he was going to break the glass. He was fighting like he was fighting a person. He was swinging just that hard. But if you sat down and talked to him, thank you. How you doing? He did. But something in him broke. And that has him to where he is. This is the problem with us in church. We sitting up in him broken, but we've learned how to hide the breaks. We've learned how to dress them up. We learn how to polish them. We've learned how to piecemeal stuff together so it look okay. We learn how to tape stuff when this needs to be taped and tuck what needs to be. Women, y'all know what y'all be doing. Y'all be nipping, tucking everything, tying, looping. I don't know what y'all be doing. Y'all be good. Y'all do go through some gymnastics that what in the world just to walk out of the house. But we as Christians do this all the time. When we walk in here hurt and wounded and don't let God do anything and leave hurt and wounded. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been left. I've been divorced. I've been deserted. I've been lied on. And these are by people who are related to me. I ain't crazy right now because of Jesus. Yes, I ain't a serial killer right now because of Jesus. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, half of us in here would be serial killers. Right up in here. And we ain't serial killing, we just shooting people, just, just boom, 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 boom. Just doing stuff to people. What, what, I, don't, I don't like, I'm just going to kill you, I don't like you. Just mad. It's Jesus, and he has, in his grace, in his mercy, in his love for us, his, his confusing love, his confusing love has allowed us to sit in here with a right mind, not wanting to hurt ourselves, not wanting to drink ourselves to death, not wanting to destroy stuff. Sitting in here with a, 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 a semblance of a peace of mind. And we don't want to please him? He gave us health. We don't have to be sitting. We could be sitting anywhere. God has been good to us. And good is, an, uh, good is an insult to what he's been to us. And we don't want to please him? He's given us everything that we have. And we don't want to please him? He's the reason we wake up. We, our children are not dead. And we don't want to please him? Half of us was either drunk out of our mind or cracked out of our mind or something out of our mind. And we sitting up in here, whole, and we don't want to please him. Most of you do not have to go to dialysis three times a week for six hours each time. Most of you have not had 25 surgeries. Most of you have not faced death. Most of you have lived a healthy life and you don't want to please God? You didn't save you. You didn't heal you. You did not deliver you. He did. 
and you don't want to please him? What are we doing? Why do we come here every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday and don't want to please him? We need to ask God to, to renew our heart, to give us a new heart, to give us a heart that loves him, to give us a heart that's grateful, to give us a heart that understands if it wasn't for his act of kindness and mercy that I did not deserve, I would not have what I have. I wouldn't be able to do what I do. The opportunities that have been afforded to me would not have been afforded to me. It's his goodness. It's his love for me. It's why he sent his son to die for me, that I have what I have, that I am what I am. And I don't want to please him like I should. God, you have to fix that in me. Because if you don't fix it in me, I'll never have nothing. I talked to Avery today. I'm going to end with this. I talked to Avery today. I said, son, I said, if you stick to the plan, you will graduate college. And you will graduate college summa cum laude. And, let, look, and you will graduate college years before you're supposed to. If you stick to the plan. Now, there will be days that you want to give up. There'll be days you want to you want to kill yourself, kill everybody, just be mad at God, mad at life. But I'm gonna say I, I say when you're in those moments, ask yourself this one question: What if I don't give up? What if I don't quit? What if I do stick it out? What will I become? I said the thing that should push you is the question you can't answer. So you can't answer, what if I don't give up? You can't answer, what if I don't quit? Because you're not there yet. You're still here. But it's the question you can't answer. It's the thing that should push you past your moment of distress. Moment of wanting to quit. Moment of wanting to give up. Moment of wanting to give the devil victory. The question you can't answer should be the thing that pushes you the most. I can't answer what's going to happen to me in four or five years. But you know what pushes me, what gets me out of bed, what gets me to do what I'm doing? I have a 21-year-old son. He is not just my namesake, but he is what God gave me to help me to live. I'd be a, I'd be a fool to not acknowledge that. At one point, I was literally dying in my house. 9215 Lake Lauder Circle. I just collapsed. CJ ran out of the shower. Don't even know how he even heard me fall. Because you know, when we were taking showers, we'd be all in our own world. And he came and said, Dad, this is what he said to me. It was like he said it yesterday. Dad, you're going to be all right. God got you. And it was his voice that called me back. Because I was, I was, y'all was about to do my funeral. And it was his voice that called me back. So you know what keeps me from give, getting, giving up? What causes me to give God play, praise and want to please God? God gave me this young man. And told me to model him. I'm like, God, I don't even know how to be a man myself. I'm going to teach him how to be a man. God says, I, I, I got you. So God sent me to a man from the Bahamas. And 28 years ago, when, he, when I met this man, God says, this is the man you're supposed to be like. So God was giving me the answer to this question back then. God was giving me the help. I said, well, God, how am I going to teach him how to be a man if I don't know how to be one? God says, I gave you an example. I gave you the help. You want to know how to please God? God gave you examples of how to please him. You're, you're, sitting, you're sitting next to him. You're sitting in front of him. You're sitting in back of him. You see him every day. You see him every service. People who love God. Does that mean them people ain't got problems? Yeah, we got problems. We live in. We all got stuff. And if we, you knew our stuff, you wouldn't want nothing to do with any. We wouldn't want to do nothing with each other. If we really do each other... 
See, there's stuff Toya know about plumbing that plumbing know about Toya that don't nobody ever need to know. But it's that stuff that causes them to love each other, to push each other, to protect each other, to pray for each other. God has put you around people that will show you how to please him. That will show you this is what pleases God. This is what makes God excited. This is, the, this, you, this is what you want to happen. You want to do something and God do for you what he did for Stephen. He stand up. That is the only time in the Bible you will ever see God stand up and applaud someone. It's when Stephen would be in stone and he would not speak evil of the people who would stone him. God stood up off of his throne and gave him a stand of ovation. You want to live a life that makes God get up off of his throne and give you a standing ovation. You want to give God praise when there ain't nobody watching that makes God give you a standing ovation. You want to bless somebody when nobody know you did it. God, when you come to prayer and nobody call prayer, it ain't women's prayer. It, it's not the uh, Father Rubies. It ain't the sons of God. But you saying, God, I need you. So, God, I got to talk to you. And when you come when nobody else is watching, nobody else is up, and you giving God praise and you giving God glory, that causes God to get up off of his throne and give you a standing ovation. That pleases God. That gives God glory. That makes hell, that makes hell nervous, and that makes heaven happy. You want to make the devil nervous? Give God praise when you don't feel like it. Bless somebody when you need a blessing. So when you need somebody to sow into you. Do something that's selfless. I, I know we don't really practice that, but that's what pleases God. Amen? Was well, this playing tonight? Let's go, let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you. God, we give you glory. Everyone lift your hands. This is, so, this is a worship song. It's a well-known worship song. But the words of the chorus are these words. You, will you meet me here again? God, meet us here. God, meet us at a place of our brokenness. God, meet us at the place of our selfishness. God, meet us at the place of our self-centeredness and heal us. God, cause us to come in contact with your presence so that the nasty stuff that's a part of us washes away. Just as we get in the shower and the soap helps the dirt wash off of us. God, meet us here tonight and let your presence act at that soap that washes the nasty stuff about us off. God, we repent where we've been selfish. We repent, God, when we thought of ourselves and not of you. When we walk past people, when we've been nasty towards people, irregardless of the reason, God, when we have not lived a life that was pleasing to you, God, we repent. And God, we ask, God, that you make us over again, that you cleanse us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And the most amazing thing about this, God, is, cause you, is that you want to. You love us with an unconditional, confusing love. It don't make sense. It don't make sense how you keep loving us and we keep doing you wrong. You keep loving us and keep, we keep walking away. But you keep loving us. God, let that love be made real tonight. Where it hasn't been real, 
Make it real tonight, Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that every heart that's walked away from you will come back. I want everyone to stand on your feet. And this is something very simple that we're going to do. And before you do this, I want you to think about what you're doing. Because once you do it, you cannot just turn around and walk away. This commitment that you're making right now is not a commitment that's impossible or that God expects you to do on your own or keep on your own. But all he does, he can't do anything until you make this one initial movement. I want you to, to, to back up from the chair you in front of you, in behind the chair, just like back up, get yourself a little room. If you want a heart that's pleasing to God, not pleasing to you, I want you to make one step forward. Now, that step may not mean, may not look like it meant much, but in heaven, it's causing a celebration. Because you making that step, you're recognizing I'm not where I should be. I don't have what I should have. I don't have that love for God or that desire to please God like I should have it. But God, I want it. And God, I'm willing to do what it takes to get it. And God, I know that I don't have to do it on my own, that you give me help. You give me physical help and you give me spiritual help. So now I want you to lift your hands. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, God. You saw every person here. And every person's acknowledgement of their deficiency. And God, that you possess everything that they need. And God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. From here on out, we will live lives that are pleasing to you. That make you smile that do your heart good, that makes us, make us a blessing and an asset to the kingdom. God, we give your name the praise. God, we give your name the glory. And we, God, we give your name the honor. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a praise. Come on, give your Lord a praise tonight. Amen. Yes, and, and, and as we get uh, prepare our hearts to give tonight, amen. I wasn't going to do this, but I am now. <laughs> While we're preparing our hearts to give, there are several people that are here that I want to say thank you to. Thank you because over the years, more than you will ever know. You make me a better person. A lot of times when I don't want to be better. And there's a lot of times I don't want to be better. But you make me better. Amen? You've gotten in my face at times, which was uncomfortable. But I thank you for it. Because I meant that you love me enough to not leave me the way I am. Amen? And that you saw more in me. So I want to say thank you. Because you want you, you, you help me have a heart that wants to please God. Amen? So I just want to acknowledge you in public. Amen? Hallelujah. Quinn? Yeah, Quinn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> God gave Quinn to me. Amen? She gave Quinn to me to talk to Chris. She don't be talking to Pastor Coco. She... She hits that, and God gave her that. Amen? Um, um, Pastor Plummer, he does it in a subtle way. Amen? Joey? Yes. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Tamala. <laughs> yes, Lord. Amen. <laughs> yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Avery. Let me tell you something. My prayer life has went up tenfold. And it's not because he's just a troubled child. It's quite the contrary. He's probably one of the most mentally gifted people I've ever come across. <laughs> she probably never had him tested, but I guarantee you, the boy has a genius level of intellect. I almost bet money on that. And that is why the devil tries to come at him the way he does. Amen? Pastor Elliot, I thank God for she's a model. Amen? Hallelujah. He's a model to me. I try to do, when I get up here, I try, especially if I have to preside, I try not to let her now. Amen? Um, Stacy Mohan. She's one of the few, listen, y'all, y'all may make light of this. Uh, she may not blow a trumpet often, but <laughs> she should be proud of what she's done and the road she's taken. Just thinking of having to take something as intimidating as the bar exam more than once and not tucking tail and running. I ain't saying that she didn't want to, <laughs> but she didn't. Even if she had Dr. Hepburn there, she still could have made the choice. You know we still got the choice, you know, but she didn't. That should be commended. Monica. Monica has a way of saying stuff that if you don't understand the heart that it's coming with, you will be offended. <laughs> But God made her that way. And I want to tell her I appreciate her being that way. Amen? God, give me a heart that pleases you. And uh, uh, last but not least, and this is, this is sad, but I don't even know his name. But every day, almost every time this man comes into church and he walks past me, he makes it a point that he shakes my hand. And he see he makes it a point that I look at him when I shake when he shakes my hand. Amen. You know what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about him. He's looking, he, he look at me right now. I don't know how much English he understands, but he understands I'm talking about him right now. I'm sorry. Mr. David, I appreciate this man. This man has not said uh, maybe two words in English to me. But I can tell this man, he, I can tell this man loves me and he prays for me. I, don't, I, can t I can tell you he does that. I ain't never heard or seen, but I thank God for him. Because when I'm having a bad day, and nine times out of ten, when he comes to shake my hand, he don't even know that that day was a particularly bad day. But he just came at the right time. And I want to thank God for him. Amen. So I, th I thank God, uh, God, give, give me a heart that pleases you. I said last but not least, but that's a lie. Two other people. Shadrach. I remember Shadrach when he first came. He was sitting right on the second row. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, with his sister and brother. Y'all was sitting right there. And he was sitting there like, you, what you don't what you say? <laughs> but this man, everything you see, almost everything you see him do. Did you go to school for television? Did you go to school for what you're doing right now? He taught himself how to do that. He taught himself how to play keyboard. You hear what I just said? And anything he's given to do, he tries to do with the best of his ability. 
and he asked God, God, if you don't know how to do it, he asked God how to do it. That's, that's impressive to me. Amen? And I know we, we say a lot about him. Amen? Because, you know, he's, he, he's a professional athlete. But that's, that's, he's doing something at the highest level that's very difficult to do. Everybody can't do that. I'm sorry. They can't. <laughs> Everybody can't do that. Amen? But the, 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 the setbacks, the physical setbacks that he's had, and not one time, not once, if he has, wasn't nobody here when he did it. Not one time have I ever seen him come into this church without a smile on his face. Having not played NBA basketball for almost two seasons at one point, over two seasons, not one time, not one time, he's coming here, I'm the man, humble, humble, loves Jesus. He could be doing anything right now. That should be commended. And for everyone who didn't, I say it all the time, you people help keep me alive. You won't let me die. And that's a good thing. Because I don't want to die. I'm too young to die. You don't, you don't look this good and die. That don't make sense. I cannot let this die. That would, that would be a sin. Amen? Why y'all laugh? It's just the truth. Y'all stand up. And y'all help me look like this too. If you don't do it physically, you do it. You pray for me. You encourage me. I appreciate that. Don't don't ever th if I never said thank you, forgive me. That's Chris. That's old selfish Chris. Forgive him. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you for every prayer you pray, every word of encouragement, whether I hear it or I don't. Whether I know you pray for me or you don't. Thank you. Because I would not be the man that I am, half the pastor that I am, if it wasn't for people like you. So you need to put your hands together and bread to the either. Thank you, God, that you allow God this offering to be pressed down, shaken together and running over that men will give into our bosom. So that I think, God, that means that people will bless us. Money that's owed will be repaid. Money that ain't owed will still be paid. God, we thank you for blessings. God, we thank you for paper handshakes. God, we thank you for checks in the mail. God, we thank you, God, for, for un unsolicited blessings. God, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, allowing us to get up be able to go to work, to earn paychecks, to be able to sow. Thank you, God, for this house. Thank you for the angels of this house. Well, God, without the angels of this house, God, many of us would be stark raving maniacs. Thank you, God, for giving us angels that love us with the love of God, that believe in us, that invest into us. God, you said every seed bears after its own kind. So God, as they sow unto us, sow unto them. As they encourage us, encourage them tenfold. God, bless the intentions of their hearts and the works of their hands. God, we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Bless the food. Bless the team that puts the food together for us every service. Tirelessly put the food together that go here to and uh, to and fro uh, uh, all over the place God trying to make sure that we have a meal that's worthy of royalty thank you for them cause us to never be uh, 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 cause us to always be grateful cause us to say thank you cause them to understand that their service is not being overlooked that if we don't see it heaven does if we don't say thank you heaven does God, we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. Everyone say.
Amen. Get connected with Jump Ministries Global Church. Be sure to follow us on your favorite social media networks and never miss out on our bi-monthly men and women's prayer services, our youth events and activities, our global outreach and community celebrations, our competitions, conferences, or even just to get that one word to encourage you. Just visit jumpministries.org. Building people, changing lives, and on the move. Joyously unveiling the master's plan. Discover your faith. Experience Jump Ministries Global Church. So if you go to the wrong people for comfort, they can keep you in your condition. Building people. Changing lives. And on the move. Jump Ministries Global Church.